always kind of get excited. I've been doing this game for almost a decade now, and I get a little excited, and I get a little inspired. And I'm going to bring you some stories that are going to be inspiring to you. The kids of Camp Good Days, I will be speaking with them, bringing you their stories, honorary coaches, honorary cheerleaders. This is a great game, but it's more than just a game. It's about the kids of Camp Good Days. I'll be bringing your stories to you throughout the night. So I'm excited. I know you guys are excited. Let's have a great game tonight. One last time here. Back up to you guys. Sports, let's head down to Casey on the sideline. Who's with one of the Fisher honorary captains. Casey. Yeah, we're used to a lot of scoring uh, in this series so far. We haven't had much of that. One of the honorary coaches for St. John Fisher, Logan DeLeo, joining me right now. Uh, Logan, uh, how do you feel so far about how your team's playing? Um, they're doing pretty good. Um, I like how their defense is playing. Yeah. I like how their offense is playing. All right, now you had cancer. You're almost 13. You're, you're doing pretty well. How are you feeling these days? I know it was cancer of the lower body, you told me, but how are you feeling? I'm um, feeling better. Um, I've been playing in a couple sports. All right, you're from Irondequoit, you said? Mm -hmm. All right, and uh, how has it been to be with the guys all week long? Uh, pretty fun. Um, football is my favorite sport. <laughs> Mine too. Yeah, um, but I can't really play it because uh, I don't have good stamina. But, you know, watching football, being with the team makes me feel good. All right, what do you tell them to get, to get going in this one? What's your piece of advice for the team right now? Um, just... Put the courage in courage bowl. Put the courage in courage bowl. That's a great advice. You had a good time this week? Yep. All right. You've been hanging out with the guys all week long? Yep. All right. It's been pretty fun, right? Yep. You better go. Well, you enjoy the rest of the game, and you're feeling good, and your team's doing pretty well, especially on defense so far. So hopefully for you, they can keep it up. All right. Logan DeLeo, he's uh, got some good advice. He just wants them to keep it up. The defense is playing well so far. We're used to a lot of points. We didn't see that he's so far. So back upstairs to you guys. We'll see if things change pretty soon. Thanks, Casey. We'll Let's head down to Casey on the sideline. The honorary coach is here. He's in enemy, enemy territory right now. He's on the, on the Fisher sideline, Lucas Lowe. And he was celebrating over here, waiting to do this interview with me when Brockport just swore they're up 7 nothing. Lucas, what kind of cancer did you have? I have leukemia. You have leukemia. How are you feeling these days? Uh, pretty good. Just right. hanging in there. Hanging in there. How do you feel about how Brockport's played so far? Uh, pretty good. They just got to keep, you know, we just got to keep it up, you know, yeah. keep them, you know, tight and everything. All right. And how old are you, Lucas? I'm 14. 14. I know I talked to you last year, and you're feeling better this year. And what's the one thing you told the guys? You've been hanging out with them all week at practice. What have you told the Brockport team? Just to hang in there, you know, try your best and just play good. All right. So far, are you happy? Yes, I am. All right. Who's your favorite player on the Brockport side? I like all of them. I like, like all of them? Yeah. That's pretty awesome. And what's been your favorite part about this whole week, just being able to be involved here? Uh, having lunch with the guys this morning, just having lunch with them. Lunch is a great part of this whole thing. I think that's an underrated part of it. What do you want to be when you grow up, Lucas? Um, I want to be a doctor. I want to be able to cure cancer, like, you know, try and have a cure for this disease. Right, well, that's a great goal, and I appreciate you taking some time, and good luck to your Golden Eagles. The Thank you. What a great idea. He wants to be a doctor. He wants to help people so, like, they've helped him. Great message. Back up to you guys. Absolutely. No. Let's head down to Casey. He was one of those campers, an honorary captain for Brockport. Casey. All right, we're joined by O'Neill Carter. He has survived sickle cell, 15 years old, city of Rochester. What do you, you're an honorary coach for Brockport. What do you think of your Golden Eagles so far? They're knocking on the door. They're doing really good. We, we're doing what we actually wanted to do in the locker room, and that's a W for right now. Hopefully that's throughout the whole game. What so, have you told them to get them inspired this week? Told them don't let Fisher, like, get in their head. Just let the ball get in their game. Just do what they got to do. German Ariel throws one into the end zone, almost caught, not quite. They'll have another play coming up here, still another chance to try to score. What do you think of the quarterback, German Ariel, so far? He's doing good. Yeah? Well, what have you told the guys to get him excited? Um, just to do their best. <laughs> well, so far they're doing pretty well. I'd say they're doing their best. And what's been your favorite part before I let you go one more time? Huh? What's been your favorite part of doing this? Uh, getting the, getting the um, team hyped up before the game and during the game. All right, we'll send it back upstairs for the field goal. He's hyped up. Back up to you guys. Now we'll head down to Casey on the sideline. All right, guys, uh, I don't know if uh, you know this, but I played for Jason Mangoni in 2000. He was the newly minted quarterback coach for the Brockport Golden Eagles. I was a quarterback on that staff. And if there's anyone out here who thinks he might go into a shell as far as play calling after that uh, game getting tight, you can forget about it. He was aggressive in every practice. 
every time when we'd run the scout team, he wanted to score in practice on the first defense. He will keep the foot on the gas, and I expect him to do that here. Back up to you guys. Casey talked to Coach Mangone about you as a player. Called you one of the leaders and in, uh, in an intelligent football player, a guy that knew the playbook. So you lived up to the billing, no doubt. Dare, dare we say that Casey was the Peyton Manning of the Brockport football program? I'll let you say that. I will, I will, I will compare Casey Bordnick to Peyton Manning. Both good looking, great hair. Look at the suit, nice suit combo. Very smart quarterbacks. I mean, I'm seeing twins. I don't see a difference. Well, certainly Casey under, understands this, uh, this Brockport Golden Eagle team, and, and in particular that head coach. And, and now to Casey on the sideline. All right, guys, we are here with Erica Berry. She's an honorary cheerleader for St. John Fisher. Fisher got off to a tough start, but they're coming back, and you're cheering them on. Give me your best cheer for Fisher right now. Uh, it was definitely the color one. I can't remember it now. <laughs> you can't remember I put you on the spot. How old are you? Nine. Nine, and what kind of cancer did you have? Leukemia. Leukemia. How are you doing these days? Good. All right. And what's been your favorite part about hanging out with the girls all week? Um, definitely doing stunts and tumbling and all of that with them. All right. Before I let you go, give me one, if you had to give one, go, just give me one. Go Cardinals, go Fisher, give it to me right now. Go Cardinals. <laughs> all right, so nice job. Erica, you're adorable. All right, with someone like Erica cheering you on, how can you not make a comeback here? Ted Seppin, Fisher still trailing. Erica, appreciate it. Good luck. Oh, well, I'm going to have a timeout here. Well, I still have you here. Before I let you go, what do you want to be when you grow up? Um, I don't know. You don't know, man. I'm asking you too many tough questions, aren't I? All right, well, go ahead. Go over there and be a cheerleader for now. I'm, I'm, in, a, I'm in a tough spot, guys. I'm right next to the Fisher cheerleaders. Tough spot to be in today. <laughs> but back upstairs to you guys. 10 to 7. Fisher's still behind, but they got a great cheerleader cheering them on. Let's head down to Casey on the sideline, who's with Gary Mervis. Casey. Hey, guys. Well, we have some injury time. Gary Mervis here, the founder of this event, the Courage Bowl. Tell us how you came up with this idea so many years ago, Gary. Well, I was coming back from camp, and I was had my top down. I'm waiting at a red light. And as the light turns, I hear this woman yelling. And I look over to see what the problem was, and her kids were throwing a Nerf football in the van. And so then I said, you know, it's that time of year, and football is so much a part of our culture that every red-blooded American boy or girl is screaming and making the winning kick or scoring the winning touchdown, and yet the kids that I had just left at Camp Good Days they can't even dream about it because no doctor in his right mind is going to let a child who's been treated for cancer sign off and let him play organized football. So at our next coaches meeting, I said to the guys that I coach with, I said, well, what if we took our annual game with the U of R because there's no real travel involved and we renamed it to the Courage Bowl because the theme at Camp Good Days is where courage knows no boundaries and we picked some kids from camp who are dealing with cancer to serve as honorary coaches with the U of R and with us. And then a year later, we added four young ladies who were dealing with cancer to be cheerleaders with us in the U of R. And who would have believed? Here we are, you know, 13 years yep. later, and there's no room for a fly here. <laughs> well, there's two fouls on this play, both on the offense. Uh, we'll continue the interview uh, as the game action continues. But what can you tell me uh, just about what this series has meant? I mean, we've got Brockport in now for the last four years. Before that, the U of R was in this. What has this meant to you over the years, you personally, Gary? Well, I think I think it's, it takes my two loves. You know, I, I love football, and, and I, I love, you know, obviously Camp Good Days. And, and the children that we serve. And, and this has given a lot of children over the years a chance to do something that otherwise wouldn't have been available to them. And it's amazing how much it means. I mean, we've lost several of our honorary coaches and, and cheerleaders, and one of our honorary coaches asked his mom to be, he wanted to be buried in the jersey that we had given him. Now, you know, to us, it's a little thing. To him and his family, that's a big thing. So to me, I know there's a young man up in heaven with a Fisher jersey on. And we know uh, this is a lot about your daughter, Teddy. Uh, a lot of ways she's running this camp for her. She's watching this tonight and happy, you think? Uh, I hope she's thinking her old man is doing a good job. <laughs> well, you're doing an awesome job, Gary. Thank you so much for everything you've done for this community over the years. All right, Gary Mervis, the founder. He's what this is all about. Back up to you guys. Let's head down to Casey on the sideline.
guys, you talked about it. Fisher needs to be careful here. Still a manageable game, 10-point game at this point before they go in the locker room. Michaels looks a little rattled after that sack he took on the last drive, then the turnover. If you're Fisher, probably likely uh, to be careful here in this spot. Back up to you. No doubt about it. All right, let's head down to Casey on the sideline, who's got Coach Vosberg. You feel about the first half. Obviously, you're down 10, but you have a history of making comebacks in this well, series. Well, too many mistakes. That's why we're down 10, too. So we got to get rid of the mistakes. This is a very good Brockport team. And, uh, we, you know, we made some mistakes, and they, they countered with points, and that's the difference in the game right Co now. Coach, the plan has, has been, it seems, to stay oh, out of the deep ball, to keep the keep, have the defense keep the play in front of them. Has that worked so far? You did give up some runs. Well, yeah, we gave up a couple runs because we missed gap control. So it wasn't so much that we're, we're playing back there. We lost gap control because when we kept gap control, we stopped people and, and so on. Even when they had a short field, we stopped them. Before I let you go, you're backed up in your own end here with about two minutes to go. You decided to throw it on third down. You got bailed out by the penalty. Uh, what was your thinking on being aggressive? There? Well, we got to be aggressive. We got to move the football. We can't just sit back there and then all of a sudden our running game not going, and then we got to punt and give them a short field again. So, uh, and we, again, we got fortunate. We got a pass interference. Okay, Coach Vosberg, good luck in the Thanks. second half. All right, Paul Vosberg's never lost in this series. He's going to need a comeback to uh, keep that streak going. Back up to you guys. Half time. Let's head down to Case Hughes with Steve Christie, the winner of the Courage Award. Yeah, as you guys mentioned, a man who needs no introduction, Steve Christie, in my opinion, the best kicker the Bills ever had. And uh, he's joining me on the field right now. And you were part of this broadcast at one point. Uh, Courage Award winner this year. What does Camp Good Days mean to you, Steve? Well, I was uh, fortunate enough to take over, uh, you know, contributing to camp. Uh, Scott Norwood started with the Bills, uh, donating for every successful field goal that he made. And it was an honor for me to step in there and do the same thing. And over the years, even though I wasn't always a Bill at the end of my career, I still continue to contribute to the camp. And it's been uh, really gratifying to be able to help all the kids out and all the families affected by cancer. What is it about this camp? Because you've been there physically, you've been with the kids, you've seen what they do there. Explain it to those of us maybe who haven't been lucky enough to get there and see what they do. I think the best way is to kind of relive through my kids who have volunteered there. After a week of helping the, the kids, the, the campers there, my girls come home and they don't worry about their cell phones. They don't worry about the iPads or TV and all that. It puts things in perspective. It puts life in perspective that any, even, any given day um, someone could be afflicted by cancer, someone could be diagnosed, and it really puts things in perspective for them, for the rest of us that may or may not be that familiar with cancer, and, and certainly the serious of it, of it all, but at the end of the day, when you see those kids at camp, full of courage, and they have so much fun, and that's what it's all about. All right, obviously there's a football game going on here, and this has been a great event to combine Camp Good Days with this event. Now that you've seen Brockport and Fisher in this series, what do you think of the football you're seeing today? Well, it's great. I mean, these guys, uh, they're not scholarship players. These guys are out here for the love of the game. They're real student athletes, and, uh, you know, that, that's what I admire about this game from both teams and the fact that they're both involved with the, uh, the Courage Bowl in, in this capacity. It just so, it says so much about student athletes these days and the opportunity and the platform that these guys have to help someone else. All right, the 2017 Courage winner, Steve Christie. Steve, thank you. Thanks for spending your time, and great to see you again. My pleasure. All right, there he is, uh, Steve Christie, the best Bills kicker of all time, I'll say. Back up to you guys. <laughs> what a great story, what a great kid, what a great piece. Uh, great job, Ray, Rick, everybody in the Spectrum Sports team putting that story together. Pretty inspiring. Now, if you're wondering, Anders continues to be cancer-free. He just started seventh grade. One more note I want to pass along to you here. That poem you heard Anders read there was written by... Bonnie Mortolaro as a thank you to Camp Good Days and the founder, Gary Mervis. That's all the time we have for the Halftime Show. We'll be back after the break. 17-7, Rockport at the half. More Courage Bowl after this. Now let's head down to Casey, who is with Coach Mangoni. You've had leads in this series before. You've let at the half. You've let them get away. How do you avoid doing that this time? You had to remind me? I had, sorry, uh, Coach. I had yeah, to remind you. Yeah. No, we, offensively, we got to play better. Defensively, special teams playing awesome. Um, overcome some penalties. Uh, Offensively, we just got to stick to our game plan and do what we do. Can you continue to be patient? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. We'll Thanks. check it after the game. See you, Jay. All right, Jason Mangoni, back upstairs to you guys. Off. We'll head down to Casey, who's got another honorary captain. Casey. All right, guys, uh, they need some advice right now. St. John Fisher does trailing in this contest right now. I'm joined by Connor Stanton. He is 12 years old. He just turned 12 yesterday. Happy birthday. Thank you. What kind of cancer do you have? Neurofibromatosis, which is a genetic disorder where tumors grow on your nerves, and they just happen to grow on my optical nerves. And how you doing these days? A lot better. Yeah, it was a hard road for you? Yes. What can you tell us about it? Well, I had 60 weeks of chemo treatment. I went for 10 weeks straight, 
in the beginning, then I had four weeks, and then after that it was four weeks on, two weeks off. Okay. Tell me about being here this week. What's it been like to be with the kids at Fisher? It's a great experience. I'm here with a lot of my friends from camp. We were actually all in the same cabin. And it's just a great experience to meet all the players and be on the field as the game's happening. Loss of two for Fisher on that first play. You know, what would you tell the guys to try to get them inspired right now? To stay hyped and to it'd be great if they won the Courage Bowl again this year. It would be. They've won it a lot, though, right? So they've done well for you guys over the years. And you love Camp Good Days. Why? Well, you get to meet a lot of new people, and you get to do almost everything at that camp. All right. Well, Connor, we appreciate some of your time. Happy birthday to you once again. Thank you. All right, Connor Stanton, one of the great kids, one of the honorary coaches here at St. John Fisher. We have another short run for Fisher. Wanted to say real quick, guys, because I saw it, the Paul Vosberg situation, kind of a continuation from the end of the first half. He was barking at the referees going in, kind of speaking to them coming out. And after that uh, uh, offsides call went against him, it was kind of just pushed him over the edge, and he came out, and that's why he got the flag. And the conversation has continued. I'm right down and listening to it right now. So back upstairs to you guys. Right, let's head to Casey down on the sideline for another interview. All right, we're here with Alex Brown. Alex, how old are you? Uh, 10. 10. What kind of cancer do you have, Alex? Leukemia. Leukemia. OK, you've been an honorary coach for Fisher. They need some advice right now. What would you tell them? Start sacking the quarterback. <laughs> that is good advice, because German area looks pretty, uh, pretty comfortable back there. What's been your favorite part about being around the guys all week? Uh, I don't know. You don't know? Just being around them, having a good time? Yeah. It's been fun, though, right? Yeah. And what do you love most about Camp Good Days? Um, probably going to camp. And... Going to camp. All right. And you like the lunch? I heard the lunch was really good. Yeah. I've heard a lot about that. There. Everybody keeps telling me how great the food is. All right. Well, Alex, good luck to your, to your Cardinals. Hopefully you can go over there and give them some advice to calm them down. I know the head coach is pretty hot right now, so see what you can do. Enjoy the rest of the night. Alex Brown, uh, you know, he's still pretty positive right now. I mean, hey, it's, they're having a good time anyway. Back up to you guys. Let's head down to Casey on the sideline. They've got two honorary cheerleaders right now, Emma Golden and Maggie Reardon. You're both nine years old, I'm told. And uh, Maggie, what kind of cancer did you have? Non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Okay, and how are you feeling these days? Good. Okay, and how are you health-wise? I know you don't remember what kind of cancer you had, but how are you doing? Good. Good, all right. What's been your favorite part, both of you, about being with the girls all week long? Um, hanging out with them and um, doing fun Phillips. We have an incomplete pass there from St. John Fisher. What's been your favorite part, Maggie? Um, probably hanging out with the girls at the practice and playing the games. All right, Maggie, you're from here, you said. You're from the uh, Pittsburgh, East Rochester area. Um, and what's it been like going out to Brock for? Have you enjoyed that? Yeah. Yeah, it's been pretty fun, right? Yeah. Okay, how about you? Have, have you been liked being out at Brockport? Mm hmm Okay, give me a cheer, guys, before I let you go. One for Brockport. You ready? Three, two, one, go. Give me a cheer. Let's go, Brockport. Let's go. Let's go, Brockport. Let's go. All right. Very nice. All right. Brockport is getting some love from these two cheerleaders, and it's paying off for them. Back up to you guys. Let's head to Casey down on the sideline. All right, guys. I'm here with another honorary coach, and an honorary coach is pretty happy right now. Ian Cameron and his Brockport Golden Eagles up pretty big right now. Ian, how old are you? 13 years old. Where are you from? From Grand Island. Grand Island, from the Buffalo area. We know it well. Uh, tell me a little bit about what kind of cancer you had and how you're doing health-wise. Um... Well, my, for my cancer, I was paralyzed from the waist down, so, yeah. Yeah, well, how, well, how are you feeling, and, and how is your health right now? Uh, I'm doing great, and it feels great. Feels great, huh? <laughs> yeah. uh, what's been your favorite part about being out there at Brockport uh, this week? I saw you take a snap on some video I saw from, out from Brockport. Yeah, everything, because uh, I could cheer for my uh, team, so, yeah. Okay, and just being around the guys, what's been your favorite part about that? Oh, gosh, um... Like, uh, anything, like, yeah. yeah. All right, well, you know, you've been able to, to coach. What have you told the guys this week to get them inspired? Uh, focus and um, practice hard. All right, Ian, well, they have focus, they have practice hard, and it's paying off for them right now, so hopefully uh, they can avoid a letdown here. Do you think yeah. they will? Yeah. Are you feeling pretty confident? Very. <laughs> I'm feeling confident after <laughs> talking, to, talking to Ian. Back upstairs to you guys. What a great kid. Let's head down to Casey on the sideline with another interview. Hey, guys, obviously it hasn't been a great night for St. John Fisher, but Fisher fans, I've got something that's going to make you smile even when you're behind. I've got Riley Farrell. You're six years old, right? And uh, you, don't, you don't know what kind of cancer you had. I know you told me that, but how are you feeling tonight? Good. Good. And what's been your favorite part of being out here tonight? Um, 
doing our cheers. Doing your cheers, and you love these girls. They've been so sweet to you all week, haven't they? Yeah. Yeah, who's your favorite cheerleader behind you that's helped you? You don't have one? <laughs> They're all your favorite, right? Okay, give me a cheer for St. John Fisher right now. Um, SJF. Yeah? All right. You're adorable, Riley. Anybody ever tell you that? No. No, I doubt that. I bet you everyone tells you how adorable you are. Anyway, Fisher, it's been a tough night for them. What, what would you tell people to make them feel better? Um, I don't know. You don't know, like, don't worry? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> she says, don't worry, don't worry, guys. It's just a game. Back up to you. Let's head down to Casey on the sideline who's got a story about this Brockport team. All right, guys, and I appreciate it. And first of all, let me say what a great run this has been by St. John Fisher. I've been to 10 of these. They've never lost, and they've overcome some amazing deficits to continue to win in this series, 12 wins. And it looks like it's going to be one loss at this point, but nothing to be ashamed of. On a night like this, any of us who are connected to Brockport, we have to think about the old Brockport coach, the man that I played under, a man Jason Mangoni played under, and that's Rocco Salamon. Defensive prowess, but a head coach. He really liked this series and was hoping someday that Brockport would be a part of this series. They were a part of this series, but he wasn't here to see it. We lost him two years ago to a rare intestinal tumor. He passed away after a long, a strong fight against this disease. And on a night where Brockport's about to win a game that's dedicated to not only fighting cancer, and battling cancer, and even sometimes losing to cancer, but fighting it hard. You can't help but think about Rocco Salomon on a night like this. I've been thinking about him this whole last quarter as it looks like Brockport's gonna win and the significance of what this means to anyone connected to Brockport. I know Jason Mangoni's probably thinking about him right now, and I'll ask him about that after the game. But it's emotional for those of us connected to this program, and I've been thinking about him a lot, and I know anyone watching this is thinking about him, and I know some people on the Fisher side, Gary Mervis told me he was thinking about him. So uh, this one's for you, Coach. Back up to you. The celebration is on for Brockport. They've got the victory, 38-7. to We're going to head down to Casey for an interview with a player and a coach. Casey. We're here with the coach and the player of the game, Justin Morrison. Uh, player of the game, this team can throw the ball. We know they can throw the ball. We didn't know they could run the ball so well. What was the key tonight for you? The O-line. The O-line was just great for us. Opening holds, moving guys, this, this, they did it all. Okay. 3-0 and now, uh, off to a great start. How do you keep it going? What's the focus going into next week? Just take it one game at a time, fo focus, and just game plan for the next team. You aware Brockport's never won in this series? I'm aware of that. How do you feel about it? I feel great. Okay. Great to be a part of it. All right. Well, hey, thank you for your, very much for your time. Congratulations. All right. Congratulations. Thank you. All right. Joined by uh, my old coach, Jason Mangoni. Uh, Jay, uh, what are you feeling right now? I know you, this series means a lot to you, and this game means a lot to you, because I've talked to you many times about it. Yeah. You got one. How does it feel? It feels good. You know, I mean, obviously, uh, you know, the, the bigger importance, right, with the kids, and we had a riot with them on Thursday and Friday. Uh, we had a few touchdowns in practice on Friday with our honorary captains. Um, and then you look at the, 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 the broader scope a little bit. You know, it's a conference game. It's a road game. It's against a phenomenal program. And, uh, you know, our kids have faced a little adversity. Our bus broke down on the way over here. We got here literally 15 minutes before we took the field um, in pregame. So, I mean, it, it, there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of things. And we talk about wanting to be one of the best in the country. And you can't be the best in the country if you're not the best in your own backyard. And these guys have been kind of the forefront of that. So it's a big one for us in, in that respect. Okay, Coach. Uh, 17 years ago, you and I were both here, uh, St. John Fisher and Brockport. Brockport won that year on their way to an undefeated season, and it was a pleasure for both of us, I know, to be a part of that team. The head of that team was Coach Salomon. We lost him two years ago. I've been thinking about him a lot this last quarter, as I know he would have been thrilled to take part in this series. What does this mean to you to get one? Is this one for him? Oh, 100%. A lot of it's for him, right? I mean, I, we, we talk in, in there in the week and use so many of his slogans that he said over the years um, that makes so much sense, especially now as a head coach, right? Um, my focus so much back then was just trying to score points, right? And right. he was the leader of the program, and, and I've stolen a lot of his stuff, and uh, I hope he's looking down pretty happy for us. And you did it on defense today. Yeah, in, his, in his honor. Right. Uh, coach Salomon, I know, uh, would be proud of this. I know uh, everyone would be proud of you tonight, Jay. Thank you. I appreciate it. Congratulations. Thank you. Jason appreciate Mangoni Thank wins you. the first Courage Bowl for Brockport. Thanks, Big deal for anyone connected to this program. And uh, we got one for you, Coach. Back upstairs to you guys.